Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Dale Puckett here. It is golden hour. The sun is just about to go down and then um, evening will beset us. So it's actually really beautiful this time of day. My gosh. Gorgeous. All right. So today actually is the beginning of the 16 inch scale ukulele. All right. So let's, let's get started. So be sure to see the last video I did, the one called Scale Length. And because in that video, I did the, um, the overview of this particular build, which is down here, using the 16 inch scale. So the first things first is, uh, I'm gonna put a heel on this thing here, right? So here's the neck. We determine this is where we're gonna cut the, um, the headstock right here. This is where the saddle is going to go. So I'm going to need a heel that's going to match this box right here. So that's first things first. Okay, this is the dry fit. I've got the template right where it needs to go. And that determines where the saddle is going to be. And that determines where this frets are going to be. Right, so I figured I'd come all the way up here to this, this dot here that with this fret. So that tells me where the heel is going to be. So all of these things have to line up and you do this now so people ask me how far does the heel need to come out here and i always answer um, it really doesn't matter i mean the purpose of the heel is to strengthen this piece of wood as it goes through the body because remember we've been cutting out a whole bunch here on the top so you just need that extra support that's provided by this heel now sometimes you can like stretch this guy out and have a big old heel you know you have as big as you want Right? And sometimes it's not bad because it gives gives the instrument more beef and it gives you something to hang on to over here, you know. But but personally, this is just my personal take. I I like it kind of kind of be in the Goldilocks zone, just um, maybe the bottom, the bottom part about it maybe an inch. Um, like I said, it's just by feel, and, and I'm going maybe a little bit smaller in this thing here because this is going to be a smaller instrument okay so it's totally up to you but anyhow that's where we're at right now no screws on this one just glue and clamps so i don't really necessarily need to wipe off all the all the extra uh, squeeze out inside here because this is all going to be inside the box i'll wipe it off later but it's not like is as necessary as it is right here because this part here is going to be exposed be able to see all this stuff so right yeah so you want to clean out all the squeeze out from this these parts here uh, next is you want to make sure that your species of wood are the same in this case here vertical grain dug fir harvested from the pacific northwest and just in case you're wondering building with dug fir is biblical and i will put the scripture in the text here so you can fact check me on that one. So yeah, so now we're just gonna wait for the glue to dry. We did it. We practiced what we preached. I got some of this tape and then taped all along so it's it's fully covered, like laminated. This guy here to this piece of flooring. So now I have a permanent template. And that way I can put the sticky tape along here, peel it off and it doesn't ruin the template. Guys, that's a great, great idea. When Monet says hi, hi. He's my little helper. All right, so we have the fretboard on. It's being glued on right now. And I made sure that it was straight, 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 straight. Man, I'm telling you what. Smaller instruments are actually easier to work in because there's less surface area to have to like file and sand and carve and stuff. Um, this is part of the uh, laminate flooring there. Dark stain on the side to give some nice contrast. So that's the neck and I, oh, and I also groove this guy out here so it's the perfect thickness for the tuners. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so I did the shelf and the trough, mark the place for the saddle. That's the neck, and then the box, I put the four corner brackets, and then the bracings underneath the little cutouts. 
And you can see the cutout has to be on the top and the bottom on this piece because of the wrap around on the wood there. Look at that nice dovetail. Isn't that awesome? Beauty, eh? Oh, and I also beveled the sound holes. And I also beveled this hole here so that when it's all together and the neck is in place, you can see a nice little bevel in here. Let's see if you can see it here. It's subtle, absolutely subtle. And look how the neck and the fretboard and the box just perfectly line up there. This is going to be a sweet, sweet instrument, my gosh. Okay, well today is the next day. I know you can't tell because I'm wearing the same clothes. Maybe I slept in my clothes, maybe I didn't. Either way, the glue is nice and dry now, so we can take this, take these guys off. Ah, let go, let go. And um, we can just continue where we left off. Isn't that just the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life? Oh my gosh, seriously? Seriously. Next, we fire up the soldering iron. And burn in the position markers. I had to stack the double dots here because there's so little room for the, the side by side. I did stain the box with a natural stain. <clears throat> and I'm thinking that I'm going to have to mix a little bit of natural stain with a little bit of dark just to get a, a little better blend between these two this is cedar and this is dug fir, so this is a lot lighter than this obviously so i'm going to try to match that up a little bit by doing a mashup between light and dark i went ahead and just tested it on the inside here just to make sure i was going to like it before i committed to the neck and although I like the way it looks, it actually pops. But as far as like being a good match for this, this color box, I'm not so sure. I have one other trick up my sleeve. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, baby. So we ended up mixing a little bit of cherry with just a couple of drops of this dark walnut. Mix it up. And it gave us like the perfect balance between the cedar of the box and the dug fur. So, pays to experiment. It pays to experiment. All right, this is golden hour of day number two. Yep. All right, so... It's not that I haven't been being busy. I have. I've also, I also build sawhorses. Check it out. Two sawhorses. One, two. So uh, let's get back to this ukulele. And notice how I said ukulele and not ukulele. Because that's the way uh, the people in Hawaii Islands, they say ukulele, not ukulele. Okay, I need to ask you guys a question. Have you ever built built a cigar box guitar and when you put it all together, the neck was a little crooked, a little, a little something, something going on there. You're like, oh, what the heck? I measured, I me double measured and it's still all blank. It's like, yeah. yeah, that's happened to me before. So I always, 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 always double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, check. Remember, I've got the centering tool here. You can put the centering tool on the top side to, to find the exact center. You can just measure it with a ruler. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, seriously, there's, there's hundreds of ways to, to get it right. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is you got to get it right here. You got wiggle room over on the back side here. So you want to make sure the back side, the bottom side, boom, is also centered. And again, you can measure, you can center, you can measure this side here, make sure that this side is the same as this side here. You can double check it with your eyeball. Here's another cool little trick. I have this little 
assembly tool. And if you can read that right there, it's like a little square. And I, I can sometimes confirm that it's square by putting this guy on here. Now you can also do this with a regular square. Um, whatever the case is, you want to make sure at this stage of the game, when you're going to be screwing in these, these dudes here on the back, shing, shing, when you screw them in there, you don't, you don't want to screw it up, so to speak, right? You don't want to be screwed. You want to make sure that this is straight up and down, perpendicular. I mean, if it's off a little bit, eh, it's okay, I guess. I don't know. It's up to you, dude. For me, I'm OCD in this, this regard here. I want this thing to be absolutely 100% perfect um, just because. There's this stuff called Guitar Re-Ranch. And here's the contact information of this stuff on the back. Hopefully you can read that. Um, this here is nitrocellulose. They don't do this anymore on guitars. Only the vintage guitars of old have uh, nitrocellulose lacquer on them. Well, anyhow, I bought a bunch of this stuff a while back and I only use it on special occasions. And today is one of those special occasions. So what I did is I got a sacrificial piece of, of, of wood and I just stuck it in there. And the reason I'm doing this is because this particular box has got like an interesting, some streaks on it here. And I tried some steel wool to try to get these out because they're, they're like, they're like weird. I've never seen these before. Maybe it's just something, maybe it's something to do with the cedar. Uh, but it's like, kind of like felt little pieces of felt that are sticking up there. And it's, um, I tried to take it off with the steel wool, but then some of the logo started coming off and I was like, nope, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to, um, try la lacquering it with this nitrocellulose and see how that works out. Wish me luck. I think it's gonna be okay. Do you guys remember that video where I had to grind my coffee with an ax? The reason why I ground the coffee with an ax is because I had an ax to grind. But anyhow, so my mom, shout out to my mom. She saw me, I think she felt sorry for me because she got me this coffee grinder. So I am curious to see, oops, see how this works. Hmm. This probably is a coarse grind. stronger handle because that handle seems like it's might break hey but looky there looky there a little bit of water some fresh ground coffee grounds go put it on the fire go hang out with mojo That lacquer makes us a real looker. So these sound holes were cut out using this like inch, it's an inch round. So they came out rather nicely. And then I just did, I hit the edges with this little round file just to kind of give them a nice worn look. <laughs> but the interesting thing, the interesting thing is that you're left with these little guys, right? These little, I used to call them Bitcoins. They're uh, interesting. Here's a little bit of irony. This is probably the smallest scale instrument I've made in a long, 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 long time. And I'm coupling that with the largest piezo I've ever used 
ever. This here measures at one inch and seven sixteenths. And I just so happen to have the exact size Forstner bit that's exactly, check this out. I'm talking exactly the right size. Dude, come on. You can't make that stuff up, dude. All right, here's something. This here is actually a deck of cards. I forget where I got this thing, but it's a, oops, it's a deck of cards that looks like a football. Football on this side, but it's an actual deck of cards. Kind of hard to shuffle. Easy to fumble, these guys. Ace. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to shuffle the deck here. Ah, never mind. I'm not going to shuffle it like that because I guarantee you I'm just going to fumble it. And I don't want to fumble right now. Hey, you want to play 52 pickup? Um, no, but I'm going to say pick a card, any card. Pick a card, and you're going to pick a card. And you're going to pick, uh, who knows what it is. It's going to be that one right there. That is the Joker of Spades. Or the, the Jack of Spades. So the Jack of Spades is going to be the card that's going to go over pickup. So we soldered up the pickup, put the hot glue in it, put the pickup into the hot glue, put more hot glue on top of the pickup, put the card down, and then smashed this box and held it in place while, while it dried. I have plenty of videos on that. So anyhow, I'm curious to see how it looks like. Dang, dude, look at that. That is awesome. Moving right along, we drilled the corners, countersunk those. And now I'm ready for this. Um, I'm just about ready for the strings. I'm going to do the saddle and then the, the, um, the hinge catch. I still haven't decided on this old antique string catch or not. But anyhow, so before I committed to what kind of hinge I'm going to use, I want to make sure that of the strings that I ordered. So I did order some specific ukulele strings from CB Giddy. And so I'm curious, I'm curious to see what else is in this box because I ordered some other stuff too. A bunch of shredded paper. Bubble wrap, yay. Receipt. Strings. These are the, um, Medium gauge, open D. Let's see what else? Oh yeah, a pound of fret wire. Dang, dude, it can work out now. That stuff's heavy. Okay, here's the ukulele strings. That's really all we care about. Let's just see what, real quick what's it, what else is in here. Another bag, mystery bag. Oh, more frets. These are the jumbo. Jumbo. I use these for the zero fret. I got two two jumbos. One's got like a curve to it, like a radius. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's see what's in the mystery bag. Oh yeah. Tuners. I opted for the black ones this time around. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I remembered this. Bunch of these itty bitty screws. Man, these things come in real handy all the time for all sorts of good stuff. Plus they're gold, they're cool. So these ukulele strings, ukulele, these ukulele strings are as follow and I quote, we have the G string at 0 0.028, then the C at 0 0.04, the E at 0 0.032, and the A at 0 0.028. So we're just going to opt for the lower three strings here, the C, E, and A. And I think, I think we're going to tune the A up to a B maybe. We'll see. 
I'm not really sure exactly, but anyhow, so these are the strings. And like I said, I am curious to know how they're gonna attach, like that says here, made in America. All right, so normally, I don't wanna say normally, cause I don't know. I do not know, but I'm hoping that there's a ball and I don't feel like a ball end. So these are probably just, uh, I'm gonna have to tie them, which is what I was afraid of. Yeah. Okay, great. So there's no, so I'm gonna have to rethink this. Normally I just put a, a hinge and then on these little thing right there, they got the little roundy thing. I stab it with a, a nail. So on this one here, I'm gonna have to think. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Think though, think, 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 think. Cause I just hate tying knots, dang it. Oh well, we'll figure it out. So went out to the truck and got the fishing tackle box. Fishing line, bunch of fishing line. Old lures, put them in a bag so they don't get rusty. Power bait, uh, flies, some dead salmon eggs. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, this, this is what I was looking for here. These, in this little box here are the hopefully let's see here yeah the split shots okay so what i'm going to do with these strings where they go yeah just tie a knot a couple of knots on the bottom of it just tie that then put that split shot on it and then pull it through the hinge let's see if that works i got to thinking a little while ago man i'm getting thirsty and i remembered oh yeah my coffee so this has been cooking for about three hours and it looks nice Stamina coffee. Let's see here. Yeah, I could chug that, dude. Ah, mm. Since we're opening up stuff, I might as well open up this package I got in the mail from Dean Lindquist, my buddy up in Canada. He's the guy who made me this awesome knife. I used the knife to open up the package. Yeah, it even says his name right there. And this thing is sharp too, you, man. You can cut your hair. Shh, shh, shh. All right, let's see what the, the Lindquist is sent. Oh, wow, check this out. Merry Christmas! Yay! I thought I had a candy cane around here. I think I ate them all. Yep, ate them all. Dang it. Had one. Shoot, gone. Oh well. Dude. I'm a day late and a dollar short on this one here. Oh, Merry Christmas from Brad and Dean. Guys, thank you ser seriously. This means a lot to me. It really does. Um Clamps. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Dang guys. That's what I get for bitching in the morning. Yep, dude, I can definitely, definitely, de in fact, get a load of this. I was just looking for a clamp because I needed to clamp this dude. See how it's, it's not lining up right here? Just ever so slightly on this side and on this side. It's not quite perfect, so I was, I actually drilled the holes, put the screws in there, and when I put it down tight, I noticed that the gap was there, so I was like, nope. So I loosened it all up, and I filled in the holes with, um, what do you call it, um, glue and a toothpick. So I'm gonna re-drill re it, but before I re-drill it, I needed to move them um, over just a hair, this guy here, and so I'm gonna push this, push this guy over and then clamp it. So I was digging through all my clamps, and I didn't have, I don't have the right size to clamp. Until now. Guys, seriously, thank you so much. I totally, totally appreciate that. These clamps work great. Seriously. They uh, held it tight enough where I could just get that screw in there. Redrill it and get the screw in there. So now these edges here are pert near perfect.
I also had to change my mind on the hinge <clears throat> because I needed something small, a hole small enough that the split shot won't go through. Normally the sides of the saddle, my typical saddle, they're always straight just from the cuts. And then of course I file them smooth and sand them. But uh, this case here, I want to get like a radius. So what I was thinking about doing was employing a little, this guy here and then give it a little, little curve here on the inside here. Now we're just going to put one of these brand new jumbos into the top of this thing here and we'll call it a saddle. After filing it and sanding it, rub a little bit of that cherry stain on here. Mm -mm. We use a little string spacing template to ensure that our little grooves on our zero fret are in the exact right spot. I also made sure to put these eyes in the middle between the strings so that when the little bar goes through that the bar the strings go and get caught there or pressed down this is just to ensure that there's downward pressure on this zero fret that's what this this little guy's for and this one here is just one of these little l i don't even know what these are do, do, if, if anybody can tell me what the heck these things are used for Dude, seriously, I have no idea. I just bound it. I just pounded it flat on the anvil, and I'm going to use that that for that. Dang, it's going to be hard telling these strings apart. I can tell this one's the thickest one, but the other ones. But then I got to reading here the uh, the G string and the A string are both zero twenty eights. So all I got to really do is just figure out one of these guys which is the skinniest one ditch it i guess it's this one here right i can't tell this guy here i'm ditching one of the skinniest ones so now i just got to determine which one of these guys is the middle so i guess it gets, yeah i guess that's easier i guess it's going to be one two three like that now the moment of truth so i tied a knot on this bad boy and i got that split shot Open it up. Now I'm going to slide it down and then close it up. So, oh, and then the other thing too is I think I'm going to do is um, I'm going to come up from the bottom. In other words, I'm going to go backwards through the hinge because I want the string. I don't want those strings, those cut ends, to like poke up. See what I'm saying? It's going to be like that. So that when it comes down underneath the saddle. Um, let's see here. I hope that works. I hope it doesn't get... Yeah, that should work. That should work. Well, let's try it. Wish me luck. Well, we got the strings on. <clears throat> they appear to be holding up rather well here. Those split shots. So, yeah, um, I'm probably going to have to raise the action here. Probably swap out the saddle with a higher higher saddle. reason being is because the action is just super low. You know, this would be great if it was a, um, like a Les Paul or something like that. But over here, it's like I'm getting a little bit of... Hear that? A little bit of fret buzz. All right, let's uh, let's remedy that. Swapped out the saddle with a higher saddle, so I got higher action. No more fret buzz. Um, but man, these strings are stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. Oh my gosh! So I'm tuned to C, E. A, according to the string package, but dude, these things, as soon as I tune up, they go out, as soon as I tune up, they go out. And I know they're not slipping over here, they're just stretching, so. So 
So anyhow, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. But I think I'm going to call it a night for now. Because I'm tired and it's late. Um, let these strings stretch out overnight. Then I'll come back tomorrow, revisit it, check all the intonation. Make sure they're all stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. And then we will tear it up. All right, so if you want to really hear the sound of this thing, be sure to tune in to the next video. Cheers, guys. See you in the next video.